this morning I woke up, woke up, I woke up this morning. Yes, four lightning shows, please. This morning Yes, poor lightning shows, please This side of the wall as a whole is dedicated to the time of the international slave trade We also call these people the indigo generation They are for the most part, if not all, born in Africa First thing you're going to notice about those names is very few African names are on that wall. And that's the stripping of the first essential human birthright, the gift of the name. First step in pushing you to being looked at as property or commodity. You're exercising a lot of power over somebody when you take their name from them and change it. So whether you practice Native African religion, Muslim religion, they didn't care. What they cared about were the specific goals they had to accomplish to settle these territories. So they captured Africans that already possessed specific skill sets to accomplish the goals. First goal when they got here was food supply. No levee on that Mississippi River. Everywhere you walk and drive today was underwater, swamping by you, nowhere to grow food. But rice grows on water, and the men of nation are skilled farmers of rice, okra, and watermelon. They are experts in draining and flooding the land for the cultivation of rice. So they brought them here to grow rice paddies on the swamps, drain the rest of this land and make it suitable to farm other crops. The Mandango Nation is a warrior nation. Hand-to-hand -hand physical combat is all they do. And the males are tall, athletically built, physically fit. <laughs> if you got 1,800 acres mostly field and you plan on working people six to seven days a week, 16 to 18 hours a day, then that's the kind of physical stature that you wanted in that field. It's going to take you a little longer to work that Mandango to death here. In spite of this being one of the most deadly forms of farming on the planet at the time, the major cause of death on sugarcane plantations was literally being worked to death. Whoa, I heard somebody call it. That was my little girl calling me. at this storm. I mean, just uh, meteorologically speaking, it is really a perfect hurricane with the eye extremely visible, the high cloud tops. It's 180 miles south southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi River. In the poorer neighborhoods of that bowl, people who could least afford it have lost the most. Water is still head high, swamping everything in sight. Every rescue boat that goes out comes back heavy with human cargo. One crew had to break open the front of this house to get to a woman who had been trapped in her attic for two days. And they will be at it for days to come. And when you pull back for a wide shot, the scene is nothing short of apocalyptic. 80% of New Orleans, including much of downtown, is underwater. The Big Easy's famous Canal Street, living up to its name. And rising waters will now force officials to evacuate the shelter at the Superdome. Katrina's departure was just the beginning of the misery. I didn't think it was over, but I didn't think it would come to this. But it has come to this. People are now living in parking garages. Others picked up what they could and moved to higher ground on the interstate refugees in their own hometown. 
Systemic racism in our society pushes more minorities into those systems, but make no mistake, that system is colorblind. And if you show up at that door, they're going to gladly open it up, let you in, and chew you up and spit you out just like anybody else. And so getting this history today, most important thing you can do with it is use it to draw the parallels to our society today and how our children still out here suffering as a result of these exact same policies, just with different costumes on them. Every time they changed that costume, y'all notice what they did? They changed that costume and they casted a wider net to bring more people into that system. This is the lady from London. She did this uh, particular book, and this was the 2009 second line. But what I'm basically uh, more happy about than anything else are my granddaughters. Aww. This one was with us when her sister died. That one was with her when her sister died. And when they came back to the neighborhood, they literally came back to the FEMA trailer. And they were happy to come back to the FEMA trailer. So when the helicopter come down, it was dropping the water so many feet in the air. So once it hit the ground, it's bursting. So that was making people go more crazy. They had women, females, going in the bathroom, using the bathroom. They had men waiting in the bathroom to rape them. So the families, the guys, wanted to protect the women, the females in it. Daughters, mamas, whoever. They didn't care. I wish there was a female, you was getting it. It was cuckoo, or I losing their mind. So all the guys was like, look, my brother or whoever, they was like, look, you're not going in the bathroom. We're going to put you in the corner. Now everybody's living in the hallway. Gonna put you in the corner. Everybody surround you. You use the bathroom right here. You're not going in the bathroom. So after a while, the smell, it wasn't safe. It was unsanitary. This morning I woke up, woke up, I woke up this morning. 